My name is Jesse Soliday and I will be presenting on Franz de Waal's theory that morality is part of human nature. In my research, I have overviewed his studies in order to investigate how well his research supports his theory. I will also be examining the context in which Franz de Waal worked and the significance of his research. De Waal is a professor of primate behavior at Emory University whose research focuses on pro-social behavior. He studied deception and conflict resolution in his early work, but then moved on to positive behaviors. Anthropology did not approve of his research at first because primatology was then focused on aggression and competition. De Waal's contributions opened up the field for studying the positive behaviors of primates. Empathy was often presented as a voluntary process requiring higher cognition, and Franz De Waal set out to counter this belief in his research. He believes the capacity for empathy and sympathy are biological. In 1975, Franz de Waal began a six-year study of captive chimps. Franz de Waal was the first to describe non-human primate behavior as planned social strategies. He attributed emotions and intentions to the primates he studied, which was unusual. This led to the field of primate cognition, which focuses on primate prosocial behaviors. De Waal sees our evolved morality as including the components of empathy and consolation, pro-social tendencies, and reciprocity and fairness. The question I will be examining is whether Franz de Waal's research supports his theory that morality is human nature. In De Waal's Bonobo Bliss, he claims there is strong support for bonobos being relatively peaceful and using sexual behavior for greeting, conflict resolution, and food sharing. Bonobos engage in sex for peace where they engage in sexual activities in place of fighting when conflict is about to arise. When a troop of bonobos come into contact with one another, instead of fighting at the boundary line, they engage in sex. Following any conflict, bonobos express concern for others through grooming and licking any injuries that were caused. If injuries do result, they are usually minor. De Waal conducted a study on captive chimpanzees through 200 food trials over three years. The success of adult A to obtain food from adult B was dependent on the grooming interactions between the two in the preceding two hours. Adult B was more likely to share food with adult A if adult A had groomed adult B. The effect of grooming was highest for the adults who rarely groomed. The chimps who possessed food actively refused approaches by chimps who had not groomed them. Food sharing, social grooming, and agnostic support are found to correlate with reciprocity. The chimps in the study appeared to aim for fairness in their food sharing. DeWall's article refers to it as the chimp service economy. Chimps are known for having some aggressive behaviors. However, after agnostic interactions, chimps often come into nonviolent bodily contact. DeWall studied a large semi-free colony at a zoo and discovered the chimps come into contact shortly after aggressive behavior. The contact is usually a kiss, embrace, holding out a hand, submissive vocalization, or a touch. DeWall termed the word reconciliation to refer to two apes performing one of these contacts after the two fought. He also termed the word consolation, which is the contact of the aggressed ape with a third animal. These are computer animations of an ape-like face yawning. Chimps that viewed these animations tended to yawn along with the animations. Contagious yawning is based on empathy and motor mimicry. We mimic those with whom we identify, and mimicry itself strengthens that bond. This is a photo of two young bonobos displaying play face, the equivalent to a human laugh. If one ape laughs, others usually do as well, which is a phenomenon also found in humans. In bonobos, this happens the most during wrestling and tickling games. Consolation is common in all apes, but is almost absent in monkeys. This is a photo from one of Franz de Waal's articles of a young chimpanzee putting his arm around an adult male in consolation after the adult chimpanzee had lost a fight. In non-human primates, the most common sympathetic action is defense against aggression. When a female reacts to help another female from being attacked by a dominant male, she is at a high risk for injury. However, this is still a common occurrence. 
One theory proposes that aversion to inequity may explain human cooperation and is likely a human universal. In this study, brown capuchin monkeys were placed side by side as shown in the image. When they were given different types of food, they responded negatively, even throwing food back at the researcher. Many non-human species with a preference for equality seem guided by a set of expectations about the outcome and division of resources. The findings from this study support an early evolutionary origin of an aversion to inequity. According to DeWall, empathy and sympathy are major components to morality and each start with the synchronization of bodies. Empathy and sympathy are biological and therefore morality is also rooted in our biology. Morality then may be considered part of human nature as biology is often synonymous with nature. DeWall's study on inequity aversion supports it being an early evolutionary trait, meaning it is also part of our biology. Wall's studies on bonobos revealed that the species would rather engage in sex than fight one another. The food-sharing habits of chimps and capuchin monkeys reveal a deep preference for equality. This research is significant because by teaching people that morality is a part of our innate evolutionary biology, it will allow people to open up to their own morality and grow a stronger connection with it. This research may increase empathy and consolation pro-social tendencies, reciprocity, and fairness among humans. Thank you for listening to my presentation.